you know, when someone opens a Dan Lane edition, I want it to be an experience. You know, when they open that nice box up, and it's got the certificates in there, and you, you know, you take the foam uh, packaging out. That whole experience is something that we think about as well. You know, so even the way the box goes together is is discussed you know we get different prototypes of those as well so it's a very very long process that we discussed by many many different people over many different years so uh, yeah it's a long job hi my name's dan lane and i'm here at castle fine art uh, to talk about my newest stainless steel edition this new edition that's coming out uh, is quite a bit different to the last stainless steel editions, uh, mainly because it's got a separate element of the flower and the hummingbird, whereas previous uh, stainless steel editions have had the uh, just featured hands with the tattooed elements, uh, which this has still got. It's got uh, it's quite a feminine cherry blossom 3D tattoo on there, but this is the first time we've done a kind of separate element with the hummingbird and the flower. You know, there's a lot of sort of R&D and development trying to make that the uh, hummingbird look like it's floating in there so uh, this is where this one's quite a little bit you know quite a lot different and also the orientation and the composition of it previously the editions have been uh, you know quite horizontal whereas this one's uh, standing up um, just adds something slightly different for collectors uh, to be sort of inspired by really I think most artists, they take influence from all sorts of things. But for me, it's nature. I'm, I'm probably quite old fashioned in my tastes of sculpture. I really like that classical Baroque marble uh, sculpture that you'd see in like a, a Venetian you know, church. You know, I love, I love that kind of thing. I often go to Italy and you know, want to walk around the churches and look at the marble sculptures. Uh, you know, when I do my more torso work or hand work, that's what I'm being inspired from. Um, but then it could be, I could be watching a, a music video or a film and, you know, just be inspired by a line from a, a song. That's happened before. There's, you know, some originals that I've created have just been inspired by a, a line from a song and suddenly I, I, write, I write it down on a, I've got a list of sort of ideas and almost like a little black book of ideas and I write them down. I'm not sure necessarily what I want to do with them when I write them down, but it's just enough to spark a little bit of uh, inspiration for something in the future. So yeah, you, it, it's, quite, it's quite surprising where I might find some inspiration. It might even be seeing a, a t-shirt or a jumper that someone's wearing. It might not look anything like the t-shirt or jumper, but it just inspires and starts something off uh, for me to sort of explore in the future. I have used hummingbirds quite a lot uh, in previous works. And for me, I like to have that mix of dark and light. And I think a hummingbird is about as delicate and elegant and beautiful as you can get. You know, it's a really delicate, natural element. And um, against the slightly darker backdrops that I do and the skulls and the sort of heavier themes, it's something that just pops out. You know, you've got that really delicate, natural element that just sort of pops from the, from the work. And also I'm a, you know, I'm a 3D sculptor. So to have a bird and trying to figure out how to have it suspended, whether it be on a freestanding edition or mounted to one of my wall hanging pieces, you know, they usually look like they're just hovering and then, you know, I get quite a buzz of trying to figure out how to make that look like, you know, it's flying, uh, you know, but without being attached, you know, they've been very popular over the years. So. And I can mess around with the colors of them and wing positions, so yeah. Okay, so previously I, I was an engineer before becoming a professional artist and um, I learned tons and tons. Uh, I, was, I was doing that for 15 years and a lot of what I used to do I find quite helpful now. It might just be paint finishes, you know, we used to do a lot of different paint finishes, but mainly it's how things go together. So with my wall mounting sculptures, there's no instruction book to what I do. I have to kind of figure it out as I'm going along. Having that engineer's mind, you figure out how to make something fit together and be solid and secure. You know, so when it's on someone's wall, I want it to look like it's 3D, it's standing out. You know, hummingbirds are, you know, magically hovering off the, the backboards. Uh, so I think the, the biggest benefit of what I used to do is really sort of figuring out how things go together and come apart and how to make them as you know, solid as possible. 
Yeah, so in the future we've got, I've got a lot of uh, new work in the pipeline, some of which is very different. As an artist, I really have been left to sort of explore what I can do. I've got no one holding me back. I can change my style and, you know, my points of view and my themes quite a lot. And that's really allowed me to develop my work. Yeah, in the next year we've got some really interesting work coming out, sort of features slightly more street art themes and some graffiti, uh, 3D, kind of graffiti vibes that we've got coming out that um, is a concept that I've been trying to develop and think about for probably the last two years and uh, I think I've just about cracked it so uh, there's going to be a whole new body of work coming out in that vein so yeah exciting times.